this is Gundel Dawson, and I have Moon Girl here with us, and you're hey. watching The Paranormal Dolls. How are you, Moon Girl? I am great. How are you? Excited about our wonderful guest, Greg, a great oh. friend and fellow Aquarian. So go, there Greg. There you go, another Aquarian. Perfect. <laughs> so hi, Greg. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. Thank you for being here with us today. And um, I am sure the audience wants to hear all about you. So we're going to just turn the floor over to you. All right. Well, I'm a paranormal investigator. I've been doing this for about 15 years or so. And um, one of the areas that I, I find is a passion of mine in uh, in paranormal investigating is an area called ITC, intertransmental communication, basically meaning that any sort of electronic device that spirit can talk to, that's, that's ITC, you know, communication. And it's, it's been something that has really inspired me in the paranormal for, since the very beginning, as soon as I saw like the spirit box work for the first time, and when I've experienced it myself for the first time, being able to hear voices coming through that box that answer your questions, uh, that to me, even now, is still pretty incredible. I never take that for granted. I love it. Uh, I've even been able to uh, build up my intuitiveness and my mediumship using the box. And I often use it to reach out to people's loved ones who have passed. I don't do guarantees on that. I never like, oh, we'll definitely get them. But at the same time, <laughs> what one of the things that I've I've kind of honed is like I I see in my mind how I can connect to somebody through spirit or via or being spirit, and that's included. Like I've reached out to historical figures. I've reached out to Abraham Lincoln. I've reached out to uh, well, Aquarius as well. <laughs> Yes. And believe in aliens, <laughs> of course. Absolutely. And, uh, <laughs> Mary, and Mary Todd Lincoln and all these, you know, it's just like, and people are just like, oh, come on. And they'll listen to it. And, you know, do I know that Mary Todd Lincoln is coming through the spirit box? I can't say for sure, but she's, whoever it is, certainly answering my questions. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, so there's something to be said about that. Is it demon and, pretending to be? <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, I mean, but and, and part of that too is like, even anyone, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> who cares if they're, yeah, who cares if they're, if they're impersonating, they're answering my questions. Yeah. That's the right. best thing of all. Uh, and then I also do uh, a Monday through Friday, I do a, a radio show, a nightly radio show on uh, KTNF that's AM 950 in the Twin Cities. It gets, um, it gets broadcast all over the world, like like this does. I mean, it's streaming, right? So everyone has an opportunity to to watch, and that's uh, called Ghost Box Radio at 10:06 p.m. Central Standard Time. And once again, just like this show and, and a lot of other shows, all we want to do is we want to talk about paranormal. We want to talk about all these great conversations and bring on people who are who are interesting and just have a really uh, really good conversation. It's you know, there's no judging of what anybody brings to the show it's just a conversation opening up different avenues of thought and and uh understanding planting awesome people. yeah can uh, you so, go ahead go ahead glenda tell us um how you got into the paranormal investigation part sure i mean <clears throat> i it's 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 odd because it's not quite like you know so many people and so many people i've met on this journey you know they're talking about the the thing in the closet when they were like five years old or mm -hmm. shadow people or their grandma coming to them after she passed though my mine did actually uh but i i got interested from watching of all of all shows ghost adventures because that was the first show i was watching where they're using the spirit box and that mm -hmm. truly got that like that just inspired me like i mentioned just a couple of minutes ago that if someone's going to talk to you and have have like responses that answer your questions that seems pretty amazing to me so it immediately inspired me and and the thing that i don't take from ghost adventures is the provoking uh, i don't feel like i need to investigate dark locations i it doesn't mean i haven't but you know, it's not like I, I know a lot of people have on their bucket list 
dark locations, good for them, however you roll. But for myself, you know, I just want to go places. And I, and I, I firmly believe just like you two will be able to do, I know, go anywhere and pick up spirit communication. It doesn't matter where we are, you know, and that's, that's the thing that I, I find, you know, like I know people want to go to some of these locations sometimes because like the architecture or the history, mm -hmm. all that totally get that. But it's like, I can be in my house and I can, I can bring forward, you know, voices and people answering my questions and loved ones and stuff. So that was, that's what it got me into it. Um, mm -hmm. But then it was afterwards doing this journey, understanding the connection between what people call paranormal and people call metaphysical and how they are actually the same. You know, they're, they're not different. We're all trying to talk to spirits and uh, that, that I understand that people want to use uh, equipment and stuff as I do. It's fun, but that you don't necessarily have to. And that the greatest equipment of all, the greatest equipment of all is your body. You know, that, that's kind of easy, but it's true at the same time. So, and that, that was really what it came down to for me. It was always being able to now to help people, you know, to go and help people help spirits because spirits need help. Sometimes they need, you know, the, the guidance of, of us because we, it sounds odd, but we're able to see better than they can sometimes because mm -hmm. they don't realize where they are. Uh, crossing over is one of my specialties. It's, it's something that I have learned uh, over the past four or five years mm -hmm. that crossing over spirits is something that has really has, has made my life better, but also has made, um, you know, some spirits been able to move on when they really needed to. And I always feel like that they're always afraid to, because they're always afraid of what's waiting for them. And they don't want to do that. <clears throat> right. Dog uh, love that's in, planted in them. Yeah, uh, it's, it's exactly, that's exactly it, yeah. So you have this really wonderful show and I was honored to be a guest on. Can you please tell us more about your awesome show and what you do on there? So uh, Ghost Box Radio is uh, the nightly show, Monday through Friday, 10.06 p.m. Central Standard Time. And I, what I really do, and I'm sure is what you both do as well, is you sit and think, what do I, what do I want to know more about? What do I want to understand better? Because there's stuff I don't understand. So I knew, like, for my first nightly show, I wanted to talk about dream interpretation because I didn't know a whole lot about it, and also that I, I kind of had a kind of a weak correlation between a dream coming true. Let's talk about dreams, but in this case, interpretations. And then I saw uh, Moon Girl. She, you know, she posted that she was doing a yeah. class with the uh, University of Magicus. And I thought, my gosh, you know, I wonder if she would talk with me and, and be on the show. And that was- No, just kidding. <laughs> nope, that I don't like you or your show. And- no. I, You know, I support I, you. You know, I support you, we're friends. <laughs> and, but you know, that's, that's what the show is about, is like finding people who are interesting and have interesting things to say, uh, who want to, who want to make things better for people or they're writing books. I love bringing on authors because the research that they do and I've in the show has been running for less than two weeks. And I think I've had four authors on already. And that's, well, that's you need to have Glenda cause she's an author too, an amazing one. Well, we'll definitely do that then. That'd be great. And then, you know, the thing that I'm kind of shying away from is, is paranormal teams just coming to me and being like, we'd like to be on your show. And it's like, why is that? And well, because we're <laughs> and sorry. It, that's that's great. Uh, but you know, if I did that for all the paranormal teams, then it, it just it just doesn't really. It's not to take away from their successes or anything, but you, you got to think about like what what is it that makes it interesting and unique to to bring people on? You know, it's just it's just the, it's it sounds kind of crummy. You know, especially when you say it out loud. But it's at the same time, it's it's it is though what it is because it's like you want to be able to get people excited. And it, 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 is it because they people have something to say or they just want to promote a team? And uh, you find there's lots of ways to promote the team. But if there isn't anything really that we can hang our hat on for a conversation, mm -hmm. you know, if they were like, oh, we did, you know, the Amityville House, like. 
yeah, I'd like to have you on. No one does the Amityville house, so right. it's not going to happen. So. <laughs> But it is true. It's something that you want something unique to open up more avenues for people to talk about all this stuff. And yeah, to you, you definitely want it to be uh, interesting. And, you know, the one thing that I've noticed, like, the moment I walked into the paranormal realm, and this was, right. you know, all those years ago, is that, you know, teams want to promote themselves and there's nothing wrong with that but you know as soon as as soon as i like befriend somebody who has a team in like the the panhandle of florida they'll send me a like to like their facebook page like team page mm -hmm. and it's like sure that's cool i get it but at the same time you know what does what do all these likes mean you know what do they mean if you have all these likes and and it's like i'm not going to need a team at the panhandle of florida uh for an investigation you know and i'm speaking as someone who has a number of people all around the country that i can rely on to help right. me with stuff i just i always i'm always wondering about what what the reason is for why people need to have like to really promote their team because it doesn't feel as much like we want to help other people but more mm -hmm. like we want, we want we want a slice of fame is what it always feels like to me. That's the majority of people, even though they highly deny it. But when it comes down to it and you are really in the community and you kind of, you know, rub elbows with people, you see the truth about things. So, yeah. You do. You do. And, and you know, first of all, if you're going to put effort in something, I understand why you're going to want to promote it. I mean, yeah. obviously, I want to promote my radio show. You both want to promote your stuff. I totally get it. But it, it just becomes like, uh, you know, like, you know, happy, you know, like when it's your birthday and you get a, get a message, happy birthday from such and such paranormal, like really. And then it's it's linked in the message so that in that message in the comments to your, the thing yeah it's just like well what's the point i mean what is the point of that i don't i don't really understand also what i've been noticing a lot at least in the <laughs> well, we're I, on, let's talk all of it no, I'm just kidding. Like, let's go for it right um, <laughs> i'm not hated let's 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 close that gap um is is also the fact that do people even investigate private residences anymore um it feels like well that's it but the thing is my it seems like the circle of people i see on facebook they're all about going to the events right they're all of, or if they're going to investigate they're going to like a location that is like a you know not a private residence but right. like a well-known place, place. Yeah. yeah 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 and and it's like once again you be you, you do what you want to do, but it just feels like that the aspect of what paranormal investigating is, and maybe in, as far as I'm concerned, and maybe I'm the one that's way off here, is that it, it's it's been so diluted about whether or not, you know, someone can meet the guys from, you know, the Tennessee Wraith Chasers. You know, I mean, it just seems like that, okay, well, the, like that's that's what it become. It's like its own like little clique of, of people. In mm -hmm. some areas, I call it a cult depending on what we're talking about, but um, it truly is. And it's, it's, it's not so much about, some are about forwarding the field. A lot of others just seem to be about wanting to go and get their pictures taken with celebrities or perceived celebrities, I guess. Or when all they're doing is taking pictures and that's like the whole thing. Like, I mean, I get you're excited. You want to take pictures and promote and everything, but when the whole event is just picture after picture, what are you really there for? What are you, yeah, and and I've I've heard about uh, some people that I know that they were going from table to table to just get selfies with everybody, and it's just all all it is that they're trying to prove. Yeah, like like that face. <laughs> right. <laughs> they're, they're, I'm like, what is it? A party? <laughs> just, and they, all they want to do is give the impression that they know all these people, where they don't know any of them. You know, I mean, they may think that they know them, but then they'll walk away and the people at the table, because I've seen this firsthand. And then when people told me this from like this last weekend at a big paranormal convention that yeah. someone did that. And that the once they walk away, the people are like, what was that? You know, <laughs> <laughs> so, 
yeah, so that's 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 my take on the paranormal. Yeah. Well, <laughs> most of the stuff that I do, I can't even talk about because it, it is a private house. And the agreement is that they don't want everybody to know that it is a, for all intents and purposes, haunted location. Because then yep. you do have all these paranormal teens crushing in and they want their private life. They just want to know who's there, why, when did they exist, the history of it. Yeah. And, and then on that hand, there is some people like I, if I'm going to do a residential, I ask them like, can, do you want this out there? Do you want me to film it? Not if so, then cool. I'll film. If not, that's fine. I understand because it is a private residence. It's not just a, a building, you know, and then people guess what we get to leave. Yeah. They stay yeah. there. Right. So you have to be careful with that too. If you are going to go investigate, um, or exercise, you know, a residential home because you get to leave. They are stuck there. There could be kids there. Whatever you conjured up or whatever you opened, if you don't know what you're really doing, and let's be honest, a lot of people don't, no offense, and then they get stuck with that. Mm -hmm. Not everyone has money to just get up and move. And that's another thing I really hate about like shows. People like, oh, they could have just moved. It's not that easy to get up and move, okay? You need money to move. Yeah. You have a family, you need to find a place just to like, you know, put the light on. It's not that easy. Mm -hmm. So you have yeah. to really take in consideration the family who lives there when you're going to investigate a residential home. Exactly. Very much so. And and we do, we do similar to, we have paperwork that they signed that we have three options mm -hmm. for how much we let out, you know, right. like full disclosure, disclosure, leaving their name off or nothing whatsoever, right. complete lockdown. And what, you know, I think, you know, you wonder the people who are looking for fame and stuff, if they did, like they had a client, the client's like complete lockdown. We don't want anyone to know anything about anything going on here. And they get the most amazing uh, evidence ever. You know, you wonder about some of these people, if they would actually honor that because they should, they need right. to. Right. But I, I get I guess I'm I'm so uh, soured in a sense because I, I haven't seen a whole lot lately that makes me feel <laughs> like that people are are like that they're not there just for themselves in this field and it's it's um I, I and I know that they are but I just haven't been seeing it lately and it's been a real bummer for me mm. yeah they're not honoring the paranormal field. Yeah. Instead, they're bringing it down sometimes. I think so. I think so sometimes, yeah. So, um, have you ever had anything that has occurred to you or that you have experienced that has put you over the top? Like, you know, one of those, oh, oh my goodness, moments. Yeah, I mean, there, there's been a couple, uh, and and you and when you say the oh my goodness moments, are you think are you saying like uh, like good or scary? Good, good, good. Not whichever good. one you want to go with, Greg. <laughs> All yours. <laughs> because uh, but there was, I had good, like oh, you good. know, yeah. good. Good, because because you know there obviously I think we've all had both a little bit of both. For for me, um, it a very positive one was we, we were at the Grand House in Rush City, Minnesota in November. And it was a group that we took that had taken our paranormal class. Uh, I do a paranormal class with uh, Shar. She does a lot of uh, uh, mediumship work and she is very talented. And we team up and we do a class six weeks. And after we do that class, we take students to a location to investigate and this location uh normally is the grand house because it is so even keeled it's active but not threatening and so even the people who are worried about it they they leave they're going like yeah there was nothing to worry about here uh one night in november we did a um kind of an experiment where we didn't want to do an estes method which the estes with the spirit box and stuff i think one of the most silliest things around personally. Um, good friends of mine do it and they get great success from it, but I would only do it with people I trust. Uh, if it's people I don't trust, because the whole purpose of the Estes is you're wearing headphones, you're, you exactly. have on, you're listening to a spirit box, 
if you don't know the people, they can say whatever they want, you know, and you don't. <laughs> I'm sure some and, of them have. <laughs> and they have. Uh, like I do, I do a show with a gentleman named Greg Koss. I mean, I trust him and I trust the people he has on. So I don't worry about it. But so Shar came up with an idea of doing it a little bit differently where everyone else can hear, but there's one person who is has headphones on and blindfold and they're pretty much isolated and they just say what's coming to them. So they're channeling. Right. And uh, it, what ended up happening is uh, what I what I think of as like a grand slam. In, in paranormal investigating. We recorded it all and we were mainly over two floors in the hotel. Uh, a tree who is channeling and Char up there with Andrea and myself and Lisa on the floor below. And we were communicating between phones that were on speaker phones so we could all hear everybody. The only person who couldn't hear anything was tree. And uh, what became very apparent is that there was two spirits that were trying to get through um, and uh, one being a, a, a young boy, the other being the mother. And from what we can understand is that uh, the young boy drowned in the pond in the back and uh, they can't see each other. They're both in the same location, but they can't see each other. The mother has passed. She probably lived a life, like full life. And she passed at some point and crossed. We believe that the boy never crossed. He didn't. He didn't know. At one point, when we're trying to cross him, he's talking about the light. It's so scary. He doesn't know. He doesn't know what's going on around him. We were getting names that were coming through the spirit box that later she would say. Uh, Michael would be one of them. We would get the name uh, as a EVP. We would get the boy's voice as an EVP and multiple EVPs where it's the same voice. We got knocking on walls. We got shadow figures. We got, you know, sounds of feet running up to somebody, um, which all this occurred over 18 minutes. Uh, at the end, we ended up reuniting the, the son and the mother. And that, I mean, it's so emotional. The recording is so emotional, but I'm saying give it justice. But at the very end, we get this EVP over uh, Shar and Tree talking as a woman, we believe is the mother, saying, it's over now. You know, it's just it's very powerful. But then at the very end of that, about a week later, one of the folks on our team, uh, I think it was Austin, he found, like, legitimate paperwork about Michael that he had drowned. Uh, he was five years old. And all the stuff that we were getting. And this is, I mean, and this is what we do this for, you know, we, we didn't realize this is what was happening. It, I, when we, we did a presentation about it on Friday at the Grand House, and it was a, I mean, the place was sold out. There was about 41 people there wanting to hear this. And I just said to them, this is a slow burn. You know, if you're coming in here waiting to hear like, you know, knock, you know huge knocking on walls and screaming and stuff, this takes a while to build up. But when it does build up, this is going to be, uh, you know, it's very emotional. It's very beautiful. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it still affects, I mean, it affects all of us who did it. But really, like Tree, who is channeling everybody, I mean, she still can't talk about it without getting really emotional about it. Because it has, it's truly changed her life. It's changed our life, but it truly changed her life. Just ridiculous in a good way you know it's just like this actually happens and when you get those validated moments that are validating each other it's i i find it hard for skeptics even to be able to say well that's just because of this that and this like is it i don't think so, so that yeah. that was a great one what would you tell a skeptic if they, because I know uh, there's many out there, and I get this question too. What would you tell one if they, you know, kind of questioned or asked you about it? What would you? I would just say that's that's their that's their choice. Uh, I won't I won't engage in it uh, mm -hmm. because it just it's 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 fruitless, and and yeah. every everyone has a right to have their opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, I I know what I know. They know what they know. And I find it always funny that. A lot of skeptics that I talk to, they're very adamant. They don't believe in any of this. Then they pause, and they'll be like, oh, there was that one time. And they'll talk about one of the most amazing things I've ever heard of in my life. 
and then they'll talk about, but then there was this other time. And it, it's kind of, to me, for those who do that, for me, it's always about like, well, what would it take then? I mean, honestly, what would it take if this doesn't make you think differently? You don't have to become a full believer, but to still be like, well, I don't believe in any of this stuff. And then they talk about that. It's like, what does it take then for you to, yeah. uh, to be able to see things a little bit differently? But I, as long as people are respectful to me, yeah. I'll be respectful back to them. I, I won't engage in it because it's, I just don't want to, I, they, I don't, I want to respect their opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's always rewarding when you prove them wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you've gotten if you've gotten somebody who actually said oh i i yeah. uh, see it now i mean yeah. the, for me it's been very rare i it might have been a handful of times at the most but i feel well, like I've gotten, i'm open to it now i believe in yeah. some of it now you know i guess that that's probably as far as i've gotten for when it comes to like real big <laughs> skeptics but they're very like you know this is what i believe so blah blah whatever but yeah it's very true. And and even at that, too, it's funny because there's a lot of people who um, I've run into who are very set with that opinion of being a skeptic. Mm -hmm. So it's like no matter where I take it or what we can do or to show, a lot of those people are going to have their, their heels in the ground so much that they're not going to go back on it. You know, mm -hmm. But that, that kind of makes me laugh a little bit because I'm like, then why are you here then if you already don't believe in this mm -hmm. why go to the events why go to the investigations or why leave comments on people's stuff it's like if you already don't believe and that's already your mind you made up your then why even engage in it just move mm -hmm. it along we did it we did an event at a place called the anderson house in wabasha minnesota about two years ago and a guy came there he was a ex-cop and he came there and I find with ex-cops, either you are totally in or you're totally out. I don't find an in-between with ex-cops. Yeah. And the this cop was there because his wife was really into it. But his energy was absolutely, because he did not believe in any of it, his energy was just really tough to get through because he just was so against it. Where at, at finally, there was a, he showed up for the first night with us. Then he stayed in his room the rest of the time, and I just have this feeling his wife was like, "Just stay away." You know, you're not you're not helping. I mean, he's just mm -hmm. his body language and everything was just like, "I don't want to be here." Mm -hmm. and it's like you know, I, I get it, but you're you're ruining it for everybody. Yeah, he just stay in your room. <laughs> and he did, and and no one missed him. I mean, it's that. <laughs> It's like not even can, the wife, especially the wife. <laughs> I don't think so at all. I mean, she, yeah, I think that she absolutely was like able to to be herself because right. when you're in a she situation, she had the time of her life downstairs with you guys while you was in there. Probably because if you're with somebody, like if you're close to somebody, and you bring them along, and and they don't they don't believe or whatever, and they might even think that you're silly for even believing. Yeah, you're not gonna be able to have a good time. You're not going to be able right. to be yourself. Exactly. Very true. And but that happens in anything in life, unfortunately. Totally. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's like don't you know like, oh, I want to do stuff that my spouse wants to do. Well, if you're not into it at all, then just do do everyone a favor and, and just don't go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just let them go wherever you know, wherever they want to go, just let them go, let them do. Mm -hmm. But do you also want to be with someone who thinks your interests are silly and stupid? You know, it's just like <laughs> that goes. It goes hand in hand. Like I, I, I don't want to be with someone who thinks what I, I mean, do is funny, stupid and funny, silly. The most obvious part of it that I, of mm -hmm. course, me being have been been single for like the last four hundred years. You know, <laughs> just even think about that. But you're absolutely right that it's like, you know, anytime you're just like, well, I think I believe in ghosts, and then, and then it'd be like, well, you're, you know, you're just whatever. That, that's a that's a red flag. My ex-wife was that way. When I first started getting into this, she was still living here at, at this castle I live in. And um she uh she would make fun of me and, and I said, Okay, well, what if I was able to bring spirits here and they can, you know, torment you? Would you still be <laughs> would you still be the way you are? And she was, she got very serious. She was like, No, don't you care? Like I had that ability. I didn't have that ability, but it was like, oh, so you you do <laughs> you're gonna be that way, then don't be this way, you know. 
I like that. I'm going to tell that. Anyone I date and they didn't give me that answer, I'm going to tell them what you said. You want me to bring me spirits? And I'm <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you're going to be, you're going to be smart ass about it. I'm going <laughs> to, you know, I mean, it's just ridiculous. You know, <laughs> like those, like we talked about before, those provokers that are just, you know, like, you wait till they actually decide that they're sick of you. It's like it's like prodding a, a tiger. You know? Yeah, you're pulling a bear. Yeah, and they might take it for a little bit, and then next thing you know, that you don't have a face anymore. I mean, it's just yeah. one of those things that there. It's some of those people I think are very lucky that. And I think it's that spirits just don't engage with some of that. They just mm -hmm. like you know, whatever. Some will so. I have I have seen scratches actually happen while they were happening. Not on me because I don't provoke, but there were people provoking and they were getting scratched and pushed and all that. And I'm like, yeah, that's the definitely answer for me. I don't want to be what you're doing. I don't want to be. And that's when I really truly decided that I didn't want a team. It's yeah. it's going to be one or two other people just to so we could go together but, yeah you know um, i uh, i couldn't agree more uh you know and the funny thing is is i didn't want a team because i didn't want egos and and in a way oh that always happens yeah people might say well you not want to have a team means you have an ego and i can i can kind of understand that but there is a team that I know. I won't say where because it might give away everything. Right. But you almost think they're a paramilitary organization, you know, mm -hmm. by the way that they dress and act and the hierarchy and, and all the other things. It's like, do you even have fun with this? I mean, right. you just, and, you know, you pay dues and you're all this stuff. And, you know, they're all about getting on the TV shows. Like, not like, and I don't mean like, you know, the travel channel shows or Discovery Plus. I mean, like the local TV shows like right. doing anything about Halloween or something, so the rest of us don't even have a chance. And um, so I guess I'm saying they're local to me. Um, but the thing is, it's like it is so, it, it is so like they're very big and they do a lot of like they do a lot of house investigations and stuff. But I feel to me, it feels very constricting to yeah. be an organization like that when it comes to that. I also understand that you want to keep things in order because you know like we talk about ego and stuff but when once i get the idea of if someone is being very egotistical and all this i just back away i was uh -huh. like oh, I'm out. i don't need to be a part of this won't make a deal of it it's just like you just won't hear from me anymore exactly exactly it, uh, but that that's that was definitely when i decided that um it's best i try solo and we just with people that I trust that are not are, are thinking the same way I'm thinking mm -hmm. and uh, we don't go through this it's a lot of ego and very competitive yeah. very yeah yeah it's like it's like the accordion uh diagram of doing it it's like you just grow it as you need it and then right. you can, and and to your point Glenda it's just like there's people that I know I can trust to bring in to investigate mm -hmm. this and, and they do that for me. And mm -hmm. most, I don't think there's, I don't think I ever investigate with teams at all. I always investigate with other individuals, come to think of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Uh, and um, well, my partner and I, um, he goes with me now wherever I go, basically to be there, to kind of, because he's very energetic, right, Sarah? He's, he's our bodyguard. <laughs> yeah, he's my bodyguard. So he's Whitney Houston and <laughs> Ben Costner, yes. But um, so I, you know, he's there for that. But I, I tr we really try both of us to just keep it at minimal. And the, if since I do do a lot of residential, the people prefer that. They don't want yeah, a lot of people, people to come in their whole house and yeah. wrecking the place and all that other stuff. So. And it is really important to have people that you fully trust. I mean, you know, that you know they're not going to um, try to be competitive and nasty towards you because at the end of the day, it is a team and you are the same goal is for us to find evidence or to teach right. you something, whatever, educate you. So 
and then plus you want to be around good energy people that you know are not trying to be mean or nasty to you they're there for that and to support you and it's really hard to find that so you know it's easier when you just kind of select who you want to investigate with versus a, lot, a group of a lot of people that maybe you don't click well with very much so and also i've i've found too like the investigations that i do that are not events it's like you, you got to make sure that the people you're investigating with, and this sounds pretty bad actually, but it's on the same level as you are on the same, you know, that they're, they're on the same, that they've been doing it for around the same amount of time that you've been doing it, that they're not people who've never done it before, because I get a lot of people who are like, Oh, there's this place that's up the road or whatever. We should go investigate it. And I'm like, well, I, I don't know you, you know, I, I you gotta be careful of that stuff because you end up with, you know, some people get scared out of their mind. And it's, to, you know, to me, it's like I had a situation where someone got frightened and I'm not making fun of the fact they got frightened because it can be very, yeah. uh, but my level of experience is different than their level of experience. So what they got frightened about is not frightening to me. Uh, but it doesn't invalidate that they got frightened, but there that's what you got to be careful for. And ultimately it, there, you, you always talk about a chain, right? And what's the weakest link in a chain? And that's when stuff might get in and it affects right. everybody. And that's kind of what happened. And, and you just have to be careful about that sort of thing. And I know it sounds harsh, but at the same time, this is, people don't, I think people downplay how, the spirit can really affect your body, your personality, your inner workings, just your ability to do simple things. And you have to be careful about all of that stuff. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Especially if you end up with somebody who has seen it on TV, this is the way to do it. And yeah. they're going in there and they're like, oh, that, 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 that. and I'm like, mm. We're going to get attacked. Okay, bring a protection before before he even thinks about it. Because the second they open their mouth, you're like, oh, here we go. Well, and also with people who are very new, and I understand everybody has to start somewhere. So I'm not talking crap about that. Everybody needs to start somewhere. But if you're not very experienced and you're just going by what you see on TV, that's not necessarily what we actually do or how we go about things. You know, you only get like the you know, the exciting moments, the climaxes on TV, you don't see the actual, you know, sometimes you're in a location and you're there for hours and you don't catch a damn really? thing. Other really? times you go in and you see the craziest, you know, things ever. And so you, you know, it's cut, the episode's cut just for like, what, 30 minutes, mm -hmm. an hour if you're lucky. Right. So if you're just going by what you're seeing, that's not really your teacher. In other words, like, don't get confused. There's a lot that goes into it, not just going to a place and then you just, whatever happens happens and 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 there's people who are really all about like and i'm thinking about an event that i i did last year at the mertz uh uh at, at, it was a funeral parlor it was uh in, it was called mertz and it was in york uh, uh nebraska and we were doing a, a another experiment and the people i was with the guy was suddenly like Oh, I, I feel something in the back of my head. I feel something on my neck, you know, and and it was like, all right, you know, it, you know, I, I can I can tell this stuff very quickly. I'm sure you both two could do it as well when it's when you're at an when you're at an event and the way that people talk, the way that they dress, you know what kind of investigator they're going to be. And uh, you know, this 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 guy had ghost adventures written all over him. And, he, you know, this is what he's thinking that these things are like. And so he's just like, ah, the back of my neck, it's burning. And I'm just like, and all I said was light. And so someone puts a light on him and I look and there's nothing there. He goes, okay, well, just let me know if something else happens. Okay. And then uh, he's just like, ah, my neck, it's burning again. And I'm like, light. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and he went and there's scratch and scratches on the back of his neck and his girlfriend wife whatever she goes that's a sign of demonic possession and people were kind of getting up and leaving and i just stopped him and i'm like show me your hands and he's like what i said show me your hands and he put up his hands and there were skin marks like skin 
in his oh, he, did that he scratched him. himself oh. and you know i just said i'll make a deal with you i won't make a big deal of this if you don't bring up any of your like supposed scratching again and stuff you're taking down you're taking down this event if you do so let's let's play fair okay you know just like yeah, yeah. get out well, how would i kick them the heck out <laughs> <laughs> we were at the end. It was the end of the yeah. event. So, right. you know, at least, at least, but yeah, otherwise it would have been like, get out of here, you joker. You know, I just. It's just so weird. Like, why are you that desperate for attention? Uh, uh, it's just so, especially as an adult, I just can't, I don't know if it's, I just can't handle it when people are very, they just want so much attention. Like, just be who you are. I don't know. I'm sorry. They that's want, a big thing off for me. Famous, and they think that that's the way to do it. It, it is. And the funny thing is, it's like we, we've been we've been investigating this place all night. Right. And we've had some interesting things happen. None of it, which is provocative. None of it that mm. spirit is provoking us at all. Not even close. And uh, in fact, uh, while everyone was upstairs at one point, I was with someone else and I was using spirit box to reach out to their grandfather. Mm -hmm. giving absolutely the spirit box was giving absolutely on point answers it was incredible so there was nothing bad happening at this place but yet this guy is just like ah oh, they're scratching me and it's like are you is it just because you're the devil or is it just because you're faking it one or the other because there isn't anything bad here you know but i, I feel like that some people feel like that they have to be the center of attention on these things. Like you said, Moongirl, whatever reason, I don't understand it either. I do not understand right. why they- Especially as a grown adult. I mean, maybe you're a teenager, maybe you're your twenties and you're just, you know, whatever, but I'm sorry. Even then I've seen people, teenagers and 20 year olds act more mature, way more mature and friendlier than some people who are much older. And I'm like, wow, that always blows my mind. I'm like, ooh, okay. Absolutely. It, it truly is like, uh, you know, and, and it's just, it really takes away the fun. And that's why I also, you know, kind of made the deal with him because I didn't want to ruin everyone else's fun. Yeah. There. And, you know, there's going to be at least one person, if not more, going to be like, oh, my gosh, what was that? It's, are we okay? And you don't want to cause a panic either. I mean, this is meant to be fun events. Events are not like investigations. Yeah, you investigate an event, but it's not an investigation. There's a bunch of people talking at once, and they're getting their chance to be able to it's kind like of a group have, event. Yeah. have an idea of what it's like, you know, uh, but... You know, there's stuff that I'm sure you both being at events and stuff and running them, you'd see that you you normally would stop someone at an event from, or sorry, at an investigation from doing, but you just let it go at an event because, you know, you want them to have fun. You know, as long as they're provoking, as long as they're not like pretending that they're possessed or something, you know, that. Although, although that has happened. I, you, you already know this, Greg. That has <laughs> happened with yeah. people right. who pretended they were. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And and you've known too that I've had that happen too from my end, where it's just like, come on, you know. And they're they're saying stuff, they're they're channeling stuff that we just talked about 10 minutes beforehand. Uh -huh. You know, like any there's no new information, but yet they're they're channeling and they're screaming and they have to be at the center of attention. And and uh the worst was that there was somebody at an event who she was very irresponsible and she was, you know, I guess she still is a medium and she, <laughs> kids, I don't know why there were kids at this event to start with. I was against that from the very start. Yeah. Uh, from the three people that showed up at this event, um, you know, there were some kids and they were, were doing this investigation and, and they said to her, they said, I'm a little scared. They like they literally said to her, I'm a little scared because I don't know what to expect. I've never done one of these before. And she's like, Don't worry, it's gonna be all right. No less than ten minutes later, she's possessed, screaming, running around. And these poor kids, they're just like, What? And you know, she's just I've never I mean, just like get out of here. Just get out of here. No. Don't people realize that to really be possessed 
it takes a, a lot. I mean, I, I, in my background, in my past, I have done exorcisms. So yeah. I know that not everything that everybody says I'm possessed, you are possessed. You might have an attachment. Yes, yeah. I'll grant you that. But possession. And that's if any, if, if right. at all. I mean, I, out of the 20 that I have done, there was only actually 12 that were real. The other ones were just attachments, you know. Uh, it's, no. and, 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 that's that's the, that, you, well, when you, they you, say a famous celebrity, they find out who your favorite dead celebrity is, and they're like, they're right behind you. They've been with you all your life. Like <laughs> you're the reincarnation of that celebrity. <laughs> you are the reincarnation of that celebrity. Uh, what, a, what, a, what a great coincidence, huh? That you. I know. Uh, I I was just talking about how much I love that dead celebrity now. You're saying that they're behind this person, and they are now they're the reincarnation of the. So which one is it? <laughs> and and the, I think you hit the nail right on the head too. With like people don't understand, you know, unless you're watching Ghost Adventures. And I, I'm sorry, I'm turning this hour into a bash on Ghost Adventures, but because there there is more to me than that. But uh, not maybe not maybe not after all. Um, but the thing is, the whole thing about um, that you have. Like anything to do with demonic anything takes time. It's mm -hmm. not like, in and, and if you do exorcisms, it's not one and done. No, you gotta. Oh, it, it could take years. Yeah. Well, I mean, heck, even in the exorcism, it took it took her a while before she got fully possessed. <laughs> and it wasn't. It was still not enough because they had two more movies after that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And then the parody you repossessed. That was a funny one, too. <laughs> but it, it is true. It isn't a snap of the fingers and, wow, I'm possessed or anything like that. You may have attachments. You you foolishly maybe allow the spirit to come in, um, you know, that you didn't know who they were and the whole thing. But well, some people also try to do that on purpose. Like they want to get possessed or they're and, hoping they get an attachment to them and and they don't realize you know it could change you completely it could destroy you mm -hmm. because what it's doing is creating fear which is what they they feed off and the the more fear you have the stronger they get and, and the more they and the more they attach to you literally yeah so very much so. You know what's great is if I if I crouch down enough, it almost looks like I'm wearing a priest collar. <laughs> I, was, I saw that actually. More more of a, I could speak with more authority about it now. There you and go. I probably, I probably have more just doing this. I probably have more uh, authority to speak on it than some of the demonologists out there that <laughs> want to make it into a you know into. And by uh, the way, I don't call myself a demonologist because. Um, I really don't want to do that. <laughs> I just been right. called. She's a McNugget into... demonologist. She's tiny but mighty. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been called into it because I bring in the light. That's all. Yes. Absolutely. And not not because that's my favorite thing to do. My my favorite thing I've seen so far though was once again Ghost Adventures when they did the <laughs> they did the, uh, the, the Demon House. They had that demon house, and yeah. they had one of the one of the little girls that used to live there. They took her to a, a Catholic church, and the priest looks at her, and she showed. To, to, if you're just going by outward appearances, or even how she's acting, that there is nothing like going on with her that's demon or anything. He looks at her and he goes, "This girl needs an emergency exorcism." And like, <laughs> what is an emergency exorcism? <laughs> Like, do you break a glass and you take out a crucifix from it or something? I mean, I don't know what it is, but I just was like, this is ridiculous. I mean, I mean, anyone who knows anything about, first of all, Catholicism knows that everything moves at the speed of snail. Oh, and, yeah. you know, it takes gonna... forever to treat. You have to, like, actually have evidence to convince them to send the everything. And it's they not have to approve it, which is it. years. Sometimes. Years, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But yet, this guy's like, we're gonna do an emergency exorcism, and it's like, and he he cast it away. It appears within fifteen minutes. I mean, it's not only emergency, but it's 
you know, it's it's in the speed lane of exorcisms. And it just, you know, like, she paid she paid an extra fee for speed, <laughs> speedy, <laughs> speedy recovery. It was ridiculous. I mean, it's just like, come on, you guys. And finally, I think finally, that's what finally made me just like, I can't even watch this anymore. I used to watch it for entertainment value, and then it was just like. Yeah, this is this is and, and, even for know, me. It's too much. We understand that they have, they're entertainers, yeah, and that's the difference. You know, they could be doing two weeks worth of shooting and finally have enough stuff for that time period, but you know, it's it's not as pretty as it looks. No, no, it's not, and it's I. But you can't tell anyone that, you know, no one, no one. It's, it's TV. Too. They have to glamorize everything or, you know. And... Right. Right. And I, I don't know if uh, we're going to have a lot of shows around much longer. I mean, through the streaming, they still have them. But I feel like that the networks are kind of you know, canceled. Most of them anyway. Yeah. The ventures move to Discovery. Um, you still have like, you know, uh, Dead Files and Ghost Hunters. But so many of those other shows seem to be gone now. And I, I can't help but think that maybe that's not a bad thing. You know, I mean, entertainment value is <laughs> not, you know, for at least for the field. But who knows? I mean, I, it'll be interesting to see because I think we're, I feel like we're at a crossroads a little bit with oh, everything. Oh, for sure. I, I, I feel it. I think there's going to be big changes. Like, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I can't say whether it's good or not, but I mean, just me being kind of a, perpetual frowny face, you know, I'll probably be annoyed with it regardless of which way it goes. So, you know, kind of, at least, at least I know what I am, right? At least I, <laughs> at least we're honest. Yeah. I gotta be honest about these things. If you're going to dish it out, you got to take it back. So there you, yeah. go. there you go. So um, we do have a few minutes left, about six minutes left. Is there anything we haven't touched about on that you really want to, Tell and do you have any upcoming events and where we can catch you? Or is there like, you know, hit us up with links, infos? <laughs> what do you got going on? We, I got, uh, you know, after all this uh, talk about having like, uh, you know, people only want to do events and stuff and whatever. I have some events coming up that <laughs> people might want to check out. And, you know, it's like, and you know, for those who only want to meet, you know, celebrities and stuff, I have one with a celebrity coming up as well. So it's like, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a complex life I lead, uh, but uh, a lot of internal you know, struggles. But we do have an event with Dave Schrader coming up August nice. 20th at the Anderson House in Wabasha. And, Dave has been really awesome to work with and stuff. And we've sold out the hotel, but we still have, we have a handful of tickets left, uh, but you'd have to stay somewhere else. And we would help, like we wouldn't help book it for you, but we would give you some suggestions on where to find lodging and stuff. And that's the 18th through 20th in Wabasha, Minnesota. Every first Wednesday of the month, uh, Shar and I do Ghost Stories and Beyond, which is just a get together of people where we talk about uh, spirit communication. Uh, we talk about ghost stories or we bring in guests and talk and stuff. And that's once a month. And it's really fun. It's just, and we hear what our audience that come in to, to listen, what they have to say, what their experiences are. We even got people to talk about UFOs and stuff like that, and also like Bigfoot. So it's it's been a lot of fun. And, uh, and then we also we're going to have another one we haven't announced yet uh, over at a Masonic Lodge in September that we're going to do an investigation at. So um, we like to do the investig or we like to do the events because we do we, like we do talk about ways the right ways to investigate at least the ways that we like to investigate um which i consider the right way but i mean you're my <laughs> um, <laughs> right. in the god complex yes always yeah. we're, 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 it's you know, always the best way and the only way right well we, all we ask is you don't call spirits a pos and uh, you know yeah. just kind of keep it nice and, and yeah. right. is that too much to ask um no. and so but i mean it's it's nice to do and it's it's fun to give people that opportunity to do that if they don't want to be a part of a team or really want to dip into it and that's that is the fun way of doing it is like 
you know, but we also make, we also sage them when we leave. We also, you know, throw holy water on them when we don't do that. But, you know, we, we want to make sure that when they leave, that they are safe. Like, they're our responsibility. If they're doing everything right mm-hmm. and they're just being, they're just there enjoying, we just want to make sure that they're okay. I mean, we're there watching, making sure that no one, because you all know what it's like when you see like something get too overwhelming for somebody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're just making sure that we don't see that. If we do, we might just kind of, take them to the side, just like, are you okay? Just want to make sure you're okay. You know, we're not going to be like pointing at them in front of everyone, like, you're possessed, you know. Just, <laughs> you're a castaway, you're possessed. Yeah, just start throwing holy water on them, you know, and just <laughs> cross, you know, just really. But no, we, we're, we do our best to, to try to make sure everyone is safe and have a good time. You know, we, we don't want to, you know, even though I spent the last hour talking about how I think people should do things and I'm very you know, clear cut about that. As long as you're not being a jerk to anyone there or to spirits, yeah. just have fun. You know, as exactly. long as you're allowing everyone to have a chance to enjoy themselves. I don't investigate these things. I step back because this is for me, this is for them. So right. Yeah. And you know, if they have fun then it raises the vibrations and the chances of anybody getting hurt is slim to none. It is. And I've, I've had some groups come to me at some events and they, you know, you just like, did you just witness a, like a puppy get ran over? Cause you have no energy whatsoever. And like that's, then that becomes my job to raise the energy of right. them in right. the room so that they, they are having fun again. And sure enough, as soon as you start doing that, you start getting some reactions and stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's amazing that that connection between of energies and like is attracting like and and all of that and people who don't believe it I, I i hope that they can experience it one day so that they can see because it is it is beautiful actually mm-hmm. well thank you greg it you. was wonderful uh yeah. is there a website or or someplace they could find sure. you? um if, feel free to uh like my facebook page ghost box radio with greg bakken um and then uh, also do ghostboxradio.com and that's where all the previous shows are so if you want to go listen to moon girl and uh I, that was that was a great episode that was a lot of that was a lot of fun thank you again for having me it was a lot of fun it was great matter of fact uh, the owner of the station called me the next day and he said how much he enjoyed that one in particular. Oh, so, yay! That was really cool. Really one cool. for the moon girl. Yeah. <laughs> that since that Monday, everything has not been as good since then. So, uh-huh. he didn't say that. <laughs> but yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Please, so please go there. And, but yeah, go to Ghostbox Radio with Greg Bakken on Facebook and please like it. We post stuff all the time on there too so hopefully you find it worth your time and effort and energy all right well thank you very thank you. much thank um, you for being here with us. Back in another time and hear more about all your experiences you need to go on Columbus den and you need to go on ghost box radio yeah. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> all right thank I'm you <laughs> Have a good one. Thank you, everyone. Oh, my God. Love you. Bye.